Hello there and welcome. It's Ion Port. It is proudly brought to you by West Blue Consulting, uh, Ghana Oil Company Limited and Ghana Revenue Authority. People, uh, Ion Port is now 1 hour, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. on Metro Television and it includes an interactive section where you can phone in or text uh, to the uh, panelists or the people who matter within the ports and harbors industry to get your issues resolved. So if you have been dealing with a port, whatever challenge you have that you've been texting us, emailing us, it's about time you're going to get live response only on Metro. It's live on this channel. It begins going into next week. We're going to have a panel here and we'll start that interactive version of Iron Port one hour fully to address all issues regarding revenue generation at the port and also clearance of goods out of the port. In the meantime, this week, the Ghana Export Promotion Authority as well as the Ghana Investment Promotion Council says everybody should come on board. Let us promote and grow export in our country. And if we don't do that, we have expanded the ports of Tema, the ports of Takrade. We will realize that vessels will bring in goods to Ghana, but they will not get some to take away. A lot of import into this country, but very little export. The Ghana Exports Promotion Authority, GEPA, in partnership with the Ghana Investments Promotion Center, GPIC, has held a day seminar on quality standards of Ghana's exports in order to make them acceptable in the global market. The seminar, which brought together stakeholders from the export trade arena, SME trade, stakeholders and experts, focused on challenges confronting export trade in Ghana. A director of economic trade at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Khadija Idrisu, said, moving forward as a country, there is the need to overcome the situation where vessels dock in our various ports, discharge goods and go back empty without loading any goods back. Our containers come to the ports and then they go back free. Our principals are saying that no to that. We want to empower the captains of our industry, the private sector, to be able to add value to whatever raw material we have and to export for the good of each and every one of us. Ghanaian businesses were charged to take advantage of the impending Tema Port Expansion Project and many other facilities being made available by the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, including lower tariffs on exports to grow the export sector. Looking at Avocado, a team of experts recently went to Kenya to study their best practices to ensure that uh, Ghana will also um, export more. And so we are very privileged to be leading this campaign to facilitate our export product. And so we are looking at in the next um, few years, basically four or five years time, to be able to double our export earnings. The seminar provided a platform for the exchange of ideas in ensuring a robust you, export instance, sector for Ghana. So at that forum organized by the Export Promotion Authority and the Investment Promotion Council there, it is clear everybody is going to work towards promoting and growing export. However, there have been a lot of challenges around this particular export business. What at all is the reason why we are importing about 15 million tons, yet we are only exporting just about 1.3 million tons? What is the problem? What can we do right? Why is it that our goods from here are not selling there, yet the goods from there are selling here? We sat down with the chief executive officer of the Export Promotion Authority, who, by the way, has also worked at the port for about 10 years before, all the way back in 1986 there about, this lady was in the port working. So being at the helm of affairs of Export Promotion Authority, there's a lot she's got to offer. Take a listen to her. There's a lot of mention of him within the port uh -huh. anytime you get around that community. Yes. Does it, does it mean that you also have some genes of the port with you? Oh, yes. That's where I started working. I was trained, everything that I acquired from the beginning was from the port. I actually worked with um, Ghana Cargo Handling Company. At that time? In 1986, when it merged with Takradi Light Ridge and Ghana Port Authority to become Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority. Mm -hmm. So, living in the port city of Tema, it was only um, 
nice that I, I cut my teeth at I Ghana see. Ports and I was authority. It just happened. So it means that you worked fully uh, mm -hmm. as a staff of the Port Authority? Yes, I was there for almost 10 years. From when to when? From 86 to 96 also, yeah. I see. 10 mm -hmm. years within yeah. the port. What department were you in? I worked um, in the office of the director of port. I worked in the training department and I worked in the public relations department. Wow. Mm -hmm. Any, any, just a quick one though. I mean, as we talk, we talk very casually about the port. Any memories you have there? Do you still have some of your colleagues? Because looking yes. back, 86 is way back. I'm, I'm, I still back. have some colleagues there. Ago. Yeah. Um, Joanna Ada comes to mind. The PR manager. Yes, because I see her most of the time. There's Rejoice. Elizabeth, Ajay Kuena, and the guys, there's um, Abraham Mensah, okay, there's Robert Darko, there's yeah, Castro. Robert, there. Castro is there. These are people that, you know, a lot of them are there still. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're a port lady? Yes, I'm a port lady. Very nice, and now you're an export lady. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. the switch now to export, you know, heading the export promotion authority, promoting mm -hmm. export. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you see some linkage there because it's a port yeah. that is used to do this, this yeah. export. Yeah, they are main stakeholders because um, whatever we send out there, we're dealing with either the airport or we are de dealing with the ports, the harbors. So definitely, they are major stakeholders. How has it been for you since taking over this huge position, uh, promoting the exports? Of our country because this is an area that almost everybody is yearning to see huge growth if we can see development in this country we've we've bemoaned the fact that uh, import is overwhelmingly high and export is extremely low for a long time it's quite challenging but that's why we are here if you are not up to the challenge i'm sure you just have to fold up and go it's been a huge challenge I'm up to the tax because that's what I want. I want I want to make a difference. I want to make an impact. Yeah. So when it's challenging, the better. We are doing all we can um, with the limited resources that we have. Yeah. We could do better if we have what it takes. But we don't have all that it takes. We need to do a lot more interventions. But hey. So what are the interventions that do you think that immediately we need? What did you come to meet? As uh, an export organization for the country, you are basically selling Ghana outside. And so you don't intend to be going to intervene in agricultural processes and all of that. But we realize that if you sit at the other end waiting for these things to happen, and they are not happening, what do you do? If I don't get what I have to market, then what am I there for? Yeah. And so I have to go back and look at what is holding things up. And in doing that, you get yourself involved in things that you are not even supposed to be involved in. But you need to be there to also make a difference at the other end. Sometimes people have things they want to export. They have products, they have produce, they have services. But it is, it is not what the market is looking for. And so we have to work backwards from the market to let them know what the market is looking for. And in doing so, we find ourselves involved in certain things that we are not even supposed to, to um, meddle in, positively meddling yeah. in. And we need what it takes to do that kind of backward. Um, and have you structured that? Have you structured that, okay, uh, this is where we should go, but a few things need to be straightened up, which mm -hmm. we haven't gotten right yet. Mm -hmm. So let's come back mm -hmm. and start from so so and so 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 mm -hmm. so, and then still be able to get to mm -hmm. our final destination. Mm -hmm. The structures may be there, but it does not only need structures. You need the financial support. You need um, the backing of the government, the, the political will to do this. Do you have that? Um, do we have that? Not as fully as I would wish that we had. Because you don't have the political will I or think the government backing to finance you enough to execute I your I think tasks. the government is doing the best that it can, but I think it, it can do better. I see. <laughs> better than the best. You are not resourced enough. I don't think so. We don't have enough. There's a lot we can do. 
to help the export um, industry, but we don't have what it takes. Like what? What do you want to do that you don't have what it takes? For instance, we have an export school okay. that we run um, four times in a year. We need to we, we we need to expand the school. We need to change the curricula. We need there's a lot that we need to do to even invite people from the sub region to come to our school. We want to upgrade. We need a premise. Yeah, and the direction of the school is what? What's the school? Seeking? The exports. Yes, it's it's school. it's training people in exports about certification, regulations, design. You know, product design. You name it, packaging everything to make your product acceptable out there we need to do this we need to intervene in some of the um, um the work of our exporters if you take the handicraft um sector we went to Ibri the other time we saw what the previous um president former president um, kufo did something, the export, um, the craft village at Ibri, you see it there, they have issues. We need to redesign the place to make it more attractive, to bring uh, people from outside to come and see the place and buy and want to export. We need to do exhibitions there. We need to attract people to this country. It all takes a lot of money. Marketing is not just going out and making noise. Even going out, how do you go out? I need to train my people to be even ready to know how to sell Ghana out there. It all takes a lot of money. We don't have what it takes. Is it, is it not also that people are not seeing exactly what probably you are supposed to do as against what others are doing? Because there have been a few times that others have questioned, OK, so how different is what Ghana mm -hmm. Export Promotion Authority is doing from what Ghana Investment Promotion Authority okay. is doing or what the other how different is, is your mandate and I think so it then is it will help people to know how daunting your task mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so if you are bringing in investors it, it comes in let me take it out the investors will come in probably produce. set up factories produce Ex and then, and then what? you need to market it we out we need to market it out so that's how it is that's GIPC and GEPA and so we are so equally it should even important. So it's difficult to marketing it out than even exactly. So you bring it's all important. Bringing it in is very very important. We need them to come in. We need them, we need to open our country up to people to come in and invest and build the infrastructure and everything. But we also need to take it out because a lot of imports and less exports. You know what it does to our currency and all of that. So it's also equally important. GIPC is very important. GPA is very important okay. as well. Yeah. And you you feel that the resources that should be able I think, to back you up is Yes. Up. I think um, government should look a bit more at exports now. It's very important, even considering what is happening. Besides our act, it's a very old act. And I think um, that is not also helping us. So we are in the process of changing this act to reflect um, present trends around the world, especially within the trade promotion organization ecosystem. So hopefully this act um, is it's, it's, it's reviewed and um, is accepted, and then we move on and see what changes it can bring to GEPA and exports in Ghana. But that surprises me, though, because it, it appears that from the beginning of, let's say, this government, mm -hmm. we heard that industrialization was key and export was going to play a mm -hmm. significant role. Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, one would expect that legislative instruments that at least back a very mm -hmm. huge institution mm -hmm. like yours, that is supposed to drive that dream mm -hmm. of industrializing mm -hmm. the country, should have been, been the, almost one of the first things to be done. Yes, but that is what we are working on. It doesn't take a day. Yeah. When you are working on these things, it doesn't take a day. It's, it's been worked on. The government attaches so much importance to it, so um, we've been given the go-ahead to review it, and that's exactly what we are doing. And as part of all the reviews, reviewing things that we are doing here, revisions and um, everything good that we are doing here, it, it, in the midst of this is the National Export Development Strategy, because okay. we didn't have a strategy like that. And this strategy is almost done, and it will be launched very soon. And, and out of this strategy 
is where we can situate ourselves as GEPA and know where we are going. Because without a strategy, of course, you don't know where you are going. And we, we had our own strategy, Ghana Export Promotion Authority strategy. It wasn't deriving from anything. It was just the organizational strategies. But now, looking at where the president wants to situate this country, there needed to be a national export development strategy. And that's what we are coming up with, out of which we will derive um, our own strategy, Exim will derive a strategy, you know, all the players in that ecosystem of export will be deriving their strategies from this National Export Development Strategy, which is being spearheaded by um, Ghana Export Promotion Authority and Ministry of Trade and Industry. Our minister is strongly behind us and he's pushing for this to be done. But are we exporting at all as a country? We are exporting, but not as much as we would want to. We are not exporting as much as we would want to. And there are factors why it is like that. One, we don't look at what the market needs. And so now our focus is looking at the market and projecting what the market needs and working towards that. What if, what the, the direction has changed. It used to be that people produce. Okay, so we have um, a lot of tomatoes in Ghana, so we can export easily. No, they may not be looking for the tomatoes that you okay. want. Yes. So now we have to go to the market, as I said earlier, look for what the market wants. And if we have it, make sure that we are meeting their specifications by way of packaging, by way of taste or feel or, you know, what it takes to meet the, their specification out there yeah when when you talk about going out there to research the market and look at mm -hmm. what, what's involved in that what what does it take so we have a whole research team here so we can if we take a country like next door togo let's go to togo we have our counterparts in togo as well we have linkages with all these countries around us and beyond us, we have linkages. We try to work with them to find out what the, ma what the market needs there. And then we, if we can afford to give them, we come back to see how we can work towards that. Right now, we are talking more about trading in Africa, in tri-African trade. If we can trade amongst ourselves, it's a, it's a huge continent with a lot of people. If we can trade amongst ourselves, we will not even be looking so much towards um, outside of Africa. So we are working closely together here to trade amongst ourselves. There are a lot of things that we can trade amongst ourselves. We, we have shea butter. Another country doesn't have shea butter. We can export to that country. Somebody has um, leather we don't have they can export into our country you know that kind of thing we should start trading amongst ourselves before we even look outside we've always been looking outside and when we take our stuff outside sometimes even if it is good they tell us it's not good i see they dictate the price because hey we have it and we have brought it to them if they like it they take it they take it at the price they want it's not a level playing field out there and now africa needs to trade amongst itself so that we can detect it, um, our prices when we go out there. We can detect what we want to do with the people out there because it's a big continent. Yeah. And, and, and I, I know that that came out very strongly at your, your forum that you organized where the Nigerian uh, counterpart, your Nigerian counterpart mm -hmm. were there and also advocated for this very, very strongly. In the short term, probably you may be looking at doing a lot more intra-Africa. Yeah. But I also know that you have dreamed to go a lot global. Yes. How do we make our product acceptable globally so that we don't go struggling and then we won't get there and they will be offering any price at their own rate and looking at our products as though they are very inferior? Yes. We don't want to look inferior, so we have to look at the product itself. One, what the market needs, how you are packaging it. Sometimes we, we cut corners. I look at certain products, they look good. They can compare to anything out there. But we are in, I don't know whether it's a, we are in a hurry to get it out there or something. Then you see that the packaging is so bad. We don't think so much about packaging. 
We sometimes we, 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 we look at the product, but we forget that packaging is also, you can put something horrible in a nice package and people are attracted to the product because of the packaging. The package, yes. So we need to look at packaging. It is a very, very, very serious issue here. We don't look at packaging. I saw a bottle of, um, um, I'm sure you saw it, appeal. Yes. And you see the bottle yes. with the appeal. Yes. And I saw it somewhere, put it on my Facebook page. And everybody wants appeal yeah. out there. When are you bringing us some? It was the packaging. Appeal can be in anything and you won't want it. It's like any vodka yeah. from Russia or anything. So it's about packaging. And because of that, we are going to hold um, a design week okay. where we will bring all the stakeholders together and bring some very good designers and people that do packaging and all of that to help us understand the importance of packaging um, to, to the products and services that we take out there. And it's not just about um, products that we send out there or we go to look for market for. We also look for market for services. Okay. So this is another area of our exports that we are pushing strongly this time, services. Do we export service at all? Which area? So we, far have we been exporting? We haven't done so well in that area, but that's about to change. Now, as I'm talking to you, there's going to be an exhibition of Ghanaian universities in okay. three cities in Nigeria because yes. we, we know that we have very good schools here. People are interested in our educational system here. And so we are now going out selling that as well. Mm -hmm. And so um, there will be three exhibitions in three cities in Nigeria to invite people to come to Ghana to see our educational system and take advantage of the good things that we are offering. Yeah, because the I beginning know. is Nigeria, but we will you be going to, to go, go to, to other, other places. African yes, countries because yes. there's a lot of there's a lot of patronage uh, of our universities yes. when it comes to with the, the, yes. the African yes. African region. But aside that, even teachers. Yes, teachers, nurses. Teachers in the I, I think in the 80s there mm -hmm. about every school in nigeria wanted to have a ghanaian teacher let me tell you a story in zambia everybody who thinks that they are very intelligent and they are worth whatever was taught will say will boast that they were taught by a ghanaian, a ghanaian. Yes. yes and so when i hear stories like this i i say we did they are still there those same people those ghanaians who can really teach you and you become somebody are still in Ghana. So I intend to bring them over if they want to. And then we will do it the proper way so that Ghana can gain something and Zambia can also gain something. So these are some of the things. What's happening with our, the quality of our product? Because there's a concern uh, that we don't produce that quality for outside. Uh, people have, are worried that chocolate, for instance, that chocolate, mm -hmm as beautiful and sweet mm -hmm. as it is, mm -hmm. we don't even cover the wrapper. The wrapper is not covered, and so definitely the outside there, they would not appreciate this one, because their chocolates that they get for, from Swiss and everywhere, mm -hmm. it's all neatly covered and sealed and all of that. Our chocolates, you pick them and you open like this, and it's all opening. What is happening <laughs> to us? And packaging, it's very important. One, the quality of the packaging, the design and everything about it, it's very important. We, in the past, we have not taken packaging very serious, but I see that some people are really making the effort to get the right kind of packaging, and we want to contribute to that. We want people to learn more about packaging. We want people to understand the essence of packaging and the reason why they should come up with good packaging, like you said. So that's the reason for the... Um, design week that I'm talking about and okay. um, from then on we think that we will gradually handhold our exporters yeah now what's the relationship you also have with the some of the regulatory and standard uh, organizations standards authority should be one food and drugs authority will be at the, the other to look at the quality of the product itself because mm -hmm. we've had uh, palm oil being banned because they have all these chemicals in them. Mm -hmm. We have fish that sometimes they say it's not wholesome. 
how are you liaising with these people to ensure that standard is really maintained? These are organizations that we work very closely with. As a matter of fact, some of them sit on our boards. So we work see. very closely with them because of certification, as you have um, mentioned. So we work very closely with them. Um, I doubt if these days you hear about stuff like that going out. The ban on uh, palm oil was just in 2017 or 18? No, I think it it's was way before. It's not recent. Uh, I don't think so. That, uh, it's not happening palm. anymore. Because I went to some malls in the U.S. You have Ghana palm, palm oil there and people are patronizing it. I don't think it will get that far if it's got all those um, things in them. So I think the FDA and, and Ghana Standards Authority have done their work to ensure that these things are not getting... Some people are recalcitrant. You don't know they can... So we have to work with the ports as well to see that these things are well certified before they can get out there. Okay, yeah. beautiful you brought the port in because that was going to be my next area, and particularly with you who knows a lot about the port already. Not a lot. I haven't worked there for 10 years, it's not bad. So again, what sort of relationship do you have with the port? Because another concern is that there's a lot happening at the ports. The Port Authority itself, uh, in 2017, when the, the tariffs adjustment, mm -hmm. they increased quite a number of tariffs on other areas, uh, imports and transit and all of that. But they decided deliberately to promote export, not to place any tariff, increased tariff on export. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot has been done. The mm -hmm. port is being expanded almost three times its current size. How do you intend to work together with the port to ensure that we increase export good enough so that we can at least make returns on the investment placed in expansion and infrastructure development and all of that in the ports? When the port is getting all this expansion works done and all of that, I think the advantage that we sitting here at GEPA can take is the fact that it gives us room to export more. So we will have to work hard because now there's room to export more. There will yeah. be enough sheds to accommodate um, anything that we send in there. So that is the advantage I think that we should be able to take. We work very closely with um, Ports and Arbors Authority. We work. We we have exporters who have um, warehouses all over the world and. It is important that they are able to export to fill these warehouses. They don't stand there empty. So we have a lot to do with the, the, the ports. And we are actually trying to even acquire warehouses as well okay. to help with um, um, exports from Ghana. So working with the ports, it's going to be a main feature because we would even need if they would give us a space there to put in stuff that we need to export out quickly okay. mm -hmm. and have you also been able to sensitize uh, your the exporters mm -hmm. stakeholders on uh, the advantages that comes with this expansion that's coming up for us um ev every time we have our export school it becomes part of it we sensitize them we sensitize them on all of these things how to take advantage of everything that is happening um, the president is trying to industrialize this country. We are on this journey together and they are all a part of it. And so we let them understand what is going on and how they can take advantage of all these good things happening in the country. Okay. So they know. Would you be able to share with us what the plan from your end is mm -hmm. in the very near future, uh, maybe also in the middle and then in the long term? What are the plans? What are we to expect from uh, the Export Promotion Authority? Um, there are a slew of things that we would like to do. But as I said, first we want to get our strategy, national export strategy, sorted. Out of this, we will um, create a path. Out of that line. Yes. But before then, there are so many interventions that we are doing. We are helping with cashew, so we are intervening in cashew. As I'm talking to you, we've sprayed about um, 30 districts. Because the last time we sprayed in 2017, 2018, we sprayed 
um, five districts, we got a yield of 30% more. So we decided to be ambitious and spray 30 districts now. We've done that because we even gave them the good seedlings. We, we gave pineapple suckers to farmers to even feed the ekunfi fruit juice factory that is coming. And um, we've gone ahead to plant coconuts to help plant coconuts. We've done a lot of interventions. All of this is geared to us getting the resources or the produce that we need to export. So we, in the past, in this past few years, two years, we have really um, intervened in a lot of agri sector stuff. We are still doing it, and now our concentration is going to shift a little bit to art and crafts, okay. which we think is being neglected. So we are looking at all the craft villages around the country, and some of them need to be rehabilitated. Some people need tools. We are doing that. It's not that we are relegating art and crafts to the side. Of course, I'm, me, myself, I'm involved in art yeah, and crafts. Yeah, I see crafts. a lot of stuff so, there looking at yes, your setup. Yes, and yeah. And they because were all done by me. Ties. Yes. This was done by you? Yes, this was, it was done by me. Oh, many, you don't mean it? This? Many years ago. Yes. And okay. so um, um, I, have, I have a passion for art and craft. So it breaks my heart when my art and craft people think that you are neglecting I, I'm them. neglecting them. So they are not neglected. We are going to pay a lot of attention to them. So that was the Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Export Promotion Authority, uh, Madame Ifua. Asabia Asari there, uh, trying and working hard to ensure that we see a lot of growth in the export sector and we can only wish her well. In the meantime, last week, folks, we told you about the fact that the director of the port of Tema uh, has just retired and uh, the board management and staff of Ghana Dock Labor Company, where he was board chairman as well, have held a farewell dinner for him and also uh, wished him well as uh, he pursues other endeavors elsewhere. The board and management of the Ghana Dock Labor Company have organized a farewell dinner for the outgoing director of Port of Tema, Edward Osei, who also served as the board chairman of the company. Members of the board, together with permanent and non-permanent staff of the Ghana Dock Labor Company, touted the leadership of Edward Osei as one that brought positive results to the company as he empowered employees. He has left his footprints in the sands of time. Within a short time that he became the board chairman of GDFC, nobody needs to tell, uh, convince anybody. You just go to the place and ask yourself, ah, what magic has happened here? And that is the person we are honoring today. Words are not properly expressed our gratitude for your contributions and the wisdom you brought to our daily lives. You have set an example to be followed in the future and cherished by those of us that were fortunate enough to have to have experienced it for ourselves. They wished Edward Osei well in his next endeavor. On his part, the former director of Temaport and board chairman of GDLC, Edward Osei thanked the board, management and staff for their support in ensuring that he succeeded in carrying out his mandate as the board chairman of GDLC and director of Temaport. He said he was proud to have contributed towards ensuring that the Temaport became more efficient and safe to all port users. My vision really was to make sure that the port is efficient, safe in West Africa, the best in West Africa. But above all, that the employees who tour there every day will have enough to feed their families and to feel dignified as human beings. So board management and staff of GDLC wishing uh, Mr. Edward Kofi or say, uh, farewell. In the meantime, his position is not vacant, though. Uh, the president of the Republic has already appointed an acting director of the port of Tema in the person of Madame Sandra Opoku Mrs. The president, Nana Adudankwa Kufuado, has appointed Sandra Opoku as the acting director of Tema Port. 
Sandro Poku becomes the first female director of Temaport, and she takes over from Edward Kofi Osei, who has reached his retirement age. This is the first time in the history of Ghana a female has been appointed to head any of the ports of Ghana. Until her appointment, Sandro Poku was the general manager in charge of legal affairs of Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, GPHA. She was employed by the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority in 2003 as a lawyer. Barely a year after, she was admitted into the International Maritime Law Institute in Malta in 2004, where she obtained her master's in International Maritime Law. Prior to serving as General Manager of Legal Affairs of GPHA, Sandra Opoku was the General Manager in charge of administration after having occupied positions such as Legal Manager and Board Secretary of Ghana Sports and Harbors Authority. In her early years, Sandra Opoku attended Sintrosis Senior High School in Akwetia in the Eastern Region for both her role and A-levels, completing in 1992 and 1994 respectively. At St. Rose's, she was the protocol officer in the dining hall prefect. She was admitted to the University of Ghana to pursue Bachelor of Laws and subsequently entered the Ghana School of Law and was called to the bar in, in October 2001. Right after her national service at the Civil Division of the Attorney General's Department, she started working at the GPHA as a temporal staff from 1st August 2002 and made permanent staff on 1st April 2003 as a legal officer, then later became principal legal officer and then a legal manager in 2008 after which she was made board secretary from 2011 to 2014. She returned to her legal manager job and was appointed general manager in charge of administration in 2017, a job she described as one of the hottest and a big learning curve for her. She became general manager legal on 1st November 2018. This was followed by her appointment to the position of acting director of the Port of Tema on March 4, 2019. Sandra Opoku is married with three children. So that is Mrs. Sandra Opoku, the uh, newly appointed acting director of the port of Tema. And we will uh, again wish her well in her endeavors as well as the director of the port of Tema. Folks, the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority is making a lot of efforts to uh, encourage the learning of mathematics among second cycle institutions, donating mathematics textbooks to lots of schools. About 10,000 copies of those books were given to the Ministry of uh, Education some time back. Again, loads of copies of those books are going to be given to uh, second cycle institutions, about 95 of them uh, from Southern Sector and also the Northern Sector. This week, those for the Southern Sector were given to them. The Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority has donated about 10,000 mathematics books to 95 schools across the country to encourage students to develop the passion for the core subjects as part of their corporate social responsibility. The goal of the initiative is to ensure that every secondary school student has access to a mathematics book which should easily be available in their library. The Director General of GPHA, Michael Luguje, said the gesture is part of plans to help improve study in mathematics in secondary schools across the country. He said, the inability of some students to develop themselves in mathematics has contributed largely to the mass failure of the subject as they usually face trauma in the study of the subject. It is a privilege for us as Ghana Ports and Abbas Authority to, to be associated with this textbook which is meant to contribute towards the teaching and learning of mathematics at the senior high school level. We've all gone through education, secondary education, and mathematics, unfortunately for a lot of us, has never been a popular subject. For which reason, if there is any initiative to support the teaching and learning of mathematics, every responsible corporate citizen should support it. On his part, the Minister of Education, Matthew Opoku Prempe, while expressing profound gratitude to the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, admonished the students to be upbeat about the study of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, also known as STEM, as government is planning to heavily invest in that regard. He disclosed that government is building 10 STEM centers nationwide where students will have the luxury to study. The Education Minister reiterated that, as part of the package for the STEM project, the Ministry of Education will offer special support for weak students by procuring past 
West African Senior Secondary School Certificate Examination questions and employ chief examiners to take such students through the subjects. Government has made money available, 55 million, to support teaching and learning and revision. And it's going to be split into buying things like this revision book for everybody. Uh, going to, teachers are going to have their support to do extra tutorials for especially the weak students in the school. Uh, and also the students are going to be motivated uh, by provision of their own textbooks. The other revision past tests that are going to be supplied as well with time. So that you don't have an excuse if you're a student to fail. Two headmasters of the beneficiary schools, Keta Business College and Peki Senior High School, both expressed gratitude to the GPHA for the good gesture and pledged to put the books to good use. Mathematics is actually a problem in all the schools in the country. And we are working hard to do away with this problem. Now, we are of the view that it is through these types of support that we can overcome this problem. Mathematics is actually a challenge to 30% of all students in Ghana over the years. And therefore, if at this time Gapoha has found it necessary to complement government efforts by tackling mathematics, for that matter, science and technology, because math forms the basis of science and technology, I think this will go a very long way to affect generations which are yet to be born. The beneficiary schools from the Volta, Central, Broahafo, Greater Accra and Ashanti regions include Tema Senior High School, Kimbu Senior High School, Gomua Senior High School, West Africa Senior Thank High School, much, and Ngwa Senior High School, next... among others. On Port Retires after the break. From the 1920s through the 60s, the ports of Ghana have remained the nerve center of Ghana's international trade and its beacon of hope. Today, the ports and harbors of Ghana are expanding. Facilities are increasing in commitment to facilitating trade. Importers, exporters, shipping agents and all stakeholders get to know where and when goods are arriving, how much to pay and whom to pay to with a mere click. Phone in and share your concerns for redress. This is Ion Port, now in Interactive, showing live on Metro TV every Sunday from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Iron Ports, transparency in doing business and building nation. Proudly brought to you by. Hello. Good morning. This is Samantha Wendy. I am sending a purchase order from S82 Ventures International. Our policy for new supplies is two containers to start with, but you must deliver within 30 days. Don't worry at all. I'm going to get you the four containers within 30 days or less. Bye. To get his pineapple slices from his country to his clients overseas, Mr. Appiah and his representatives have to complete a number of regulatory compliance procedures to various international trade stakeholders. Single window, Mr. Abia has completed all his international trade procedures through one portal. He has registered his company information, applied for the necessary permit, certificates and licenses, and all that remains is for him to get a text alert for clearance and movement of goods. And that's how simple facilitating international trade could be in a single window environment. You can offer competitive services to your trading partners in China. America, even here, in a simpler, faster, and cost-effective way. Single window, the only way to Ghana's economic growth is in our hands. Here's innovation from Goyle that takes you further. New Goyle Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 Lubes have been expertly crafted with the latest in liquid engineering technology. Highly advanced for modern engines, prolongs oil change intervals, save you fuel, clean, protect and enhance engine performance. The way engines work has become complex and Goyle has innovated to stay ahead. Expertly crafted lubricants that work excellently with all petrol and diesel engines of today. New Goyle Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 News. Innovation that takes you further. Goyle. 
good energy. From the 1920s through the 60s, the ports of Ghana have remained the nerve center of Ghana's international trade and its beacon of hope. Today, the ports and harbors of Ghana are expanding. Facilities are increasing in commitment to facilitating trade. Importers, exporters, shipping agents and all stakeholders get to know where and when goods are arriving, how much to pay and whom to pay to with a mere click. Phone in and share your concerns for redress. This is Ion Port, now interactive, showing live on Metro TV every Sunday from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Iron Port, transparency in doing business and building nation. Proudly brought to you by. Welcome back from the Bricks to watching Iron Port and news and activities around the port industry next. The Tamaport security has in its custody a 21-year-old Moroccan stowaway, Abdul Hadi, who was hiding on board the vessel MV Lanidi in search of free passage to Europe, according to the Tamaport security manager, Joseph Punamani. The port security was contacted by the ship's crew to assist in disembarking the stowaway after finding him on their vessel. He revealed that the young Moroccan man who sneaked into the vessel from Safi port in Morocco was of the perception that the vessel was being bound where he intended to travel for greener pastures. And he joined the vessel from uh, Morocco uh, at a, a, a port from Morocco and they got here. His age is 21. So we, with the immigration, with the police, had to visit the vessel to uh, disembark him and uh, find a way of sending him back to his country. The stowaway, according to the crewmen, surrounded himself 10 days after he reached unbearable hunger. No matter what food you carry, the weather is not friendly if you are going to Europe. <laughs> the winter will sort you out, you own up, and they will bring you up back. Kennel Joseph Punamani revealed that his outfit is collaborating with the Ghana police and the immigration service to get into contact with the Moroccan government to arrange for his shipment back to Morocco. The port security manager advised the public to refrain from stowaway activities as they are very unsafe and futile. It's a wasted effort to attempt to stow away. So to my, my brothers and sisters here, they should this abuse their mind that, that one, they, they can never succeed in stowing away. Well, even when you go, they will get you and bring you back. Facility CCTV cameras everywhere, so you cannot hide. There are dogs rummaging, and so it's, it's difficult. When you go and you get even to your final destination, they will bring you back. And when they bring you back, the law is still waiting for you. The, because you didn't use proper procedure, you use illegal means. The law will wait for you and punish you. And sometimes if you are not lucky, the law will jail you even two years. So it is not any, it is not advisable uh, to away from a country. International Port News next. Romanian Free Trade Union of Navigators is reporting that three crew members of a mortar flag tanker vessel have been taken hostage while in the Gulf of Guinea. The 40,500 deadweight tonnage tanker Histria Ivory was attacked by pirates some 20 miles from the port of Lome, Togo on March 3, 2019. After activating the alarm, the majority of the 21 Romanian sailors on board the ship mustered in the citadel. However, pirates kidnapped three crew members and escaped. No injuries to the remaining crew members were reported. Some criminals have attempted to board a container ship owned by Singapore's Pacific International Lines, PIL, while the vessel was sailing on the high seas in the Gulf of Guinea on February 21, 2019. According to piracy watchdog Recap ICC, more than four men armed with guns on board an unlit fast boat attempted to board the 3,889 TU Kota Satria vessel. Two of the perpetrators attempted to hook a ladder to the ship's hull. However, they were not successful and slowed down the pursuit. The perpetrators then fired two gunshots towards the ship's bridge and subsequently to the ship's accommodation. There were no injuries to the ship's crew and no damage to the vessel reported. In addition, no items were stolen, according to Recap. Hello. Good morning. This is Samantha Wendy. 
I am sending a purchase order from SA2 Ventures International. Our policy for new supplies is two containers to start with, but you must deliver within 30 days. Don't worry at all. I'm going to get you the four containers within 30 days or less. Bye. To get his pineapple slices from his country to his clients overseas, Mr. Appiah and his representatives have to complete a number of regulatory compliance procedures to various international trade stakeholders. Hey, Bama, what's going on? Get it right. Using single window, Mr. Apia has completed all his international trade procedures through one portal. He has registered his company information, applied for the necessary permit, certificates and licenses, and all that remains is for him to get a text alert for clearance and movement of goods. And that's how simple facilitating international trade could be in a single window environment. You can offer competitive services to your trading partners in China America, even here, in a simpler, faster, and cost-effective way. Single window, the only way to Ghana's economic growth is in our hands. From the 1920s through the 60s, the ports of Ghana have remained the nerve center of Ghana's international trade and its beacon of hope. Today, the ports and harbors of Ghana are expanding. Facilities are increasing in commitment to facilitating trade. Importers, exporters, shipping agents and all stakeholders get to know where and when goods are arriving, how much to pay and whom to pay to with a mere click. Phone in and share your concerns for redress. This is Ion Port, now interactive, showing live on Metro TV every Sunday from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Iron Port, transparency in doing business and building nation. Proudly brought to you by. <laughs> Here's innovation from Goyle that takes you further. New Goyle Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 tubes have been expertly crafted with the latest in liquid engineering technology, highly advanced for modern engines, prolongs oil change intervals, save you fuel, clean, protect and enhance engine performance. The way engines work has become complex and Goyle has innovated to stay ahead. Expertly crafted lubricants that work excellently with all petrol and diesel engines of today. New Goyle Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 News. Innovation that takes you further. Goyle. Good energy. From the 1920s through the 60s, the ports of Ghana have remained the nerve center of Ghana's international trade and its beacon of hope. Today, the ports and harbors of Ghana are expanding. Facilities are increasing in commitment to facilitating trade. Importers, exporters, shipping agents and all stakeholders get to know where and when goods are arriving, how much to pay and whom to pay to with a mere click. Phone in and share your concerns for redress. This is Ion Port, now interactive, showing live on Metro TV every Sunday from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Iron Port, transparency in doing business and building nation. Proudly brought to you by. Schedules of vessels that are sitting in the port, those that are at Anchorage, those expected to come in this week, plus the Bank of Ghana exchange rate that you need to know to clear your goods out of the port next.
So that's it for this week's episode of Ion Port. Like I said, once again, you have to be standing by for us because on Metro Television, we're coming uh, live one hour. It's interactive. You can phone in, text, and also talk to all the people that will be on the platform regarding any challenge you get in course of doing business with the port and definitely we will try to share them with the rest of the world and also endeavor to address them we have a course to build our country and we will do it whichever form it takes through listening to you and informing you as well thank you for watching the program and also thanks a lot to my supporting crew particularly my man william abey kukena also my producer general Solomon Anderson, Joe Boone, Joe Lavo, Robert Nyantechi, Godwin Kabute, and the executive producers of the program, Madame Abna Sewa Opokufusu, and Madame Esther Jebidonko. Thanks for watching. <laughs>